Okay, I want to welcome everyone to the Texas Association for College Admission Counseling. Uh, we have six panelists, and uh, this is a great opportunity for you to learn about these six different institutions and universities. And if you have a question, the best way to do that is by clicking the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. So if you have a question for all the panelists or one individually, you just click that Q&A and you can ask the question there. And the panelists will be able to respond to you um, throughout the 45 minute uh, college fair that we have here. Um, your camera and microphone are off. Again, they cannot see or hear you. So the best way to communicate is through the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. This is recorded and it will be available for you at strivecan.com slash Texas. And I'm gonna put all that information in the chat. Um, and you can sign up for more sessions uh, for the rest of tonight, but today is the last day for the Texas Association uh, College and Mission Counseling. Um, so thank you again for being here. And we are going to get started. The first uh, college to go, I believe we have, I, I, I'm gonna say it wrong again. So if, <laughs> if you could come in and save the day for me. Well, thank you very much, Christy. Hi, everyone. I'm going to present for Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Um, from here on out, we can call it WPI. That's okay. And just to introduce myself, my name is Isabella Kamasura. I use she, her pronouns, and I am typically the admissions counselor who would normally travel to Texas or in this past year at least have virtual options or opportunities with students from Texas. So all about WPI, just a quick glance about where we are geographically and what we offer. So we are located in the central area of Massachusetts, about an hour away from Boston, about two hours away from New York City. A lot of what we have to offer academically pertains to science, technology, engineering, and math, so STEM. And there's also areas of focus that um, pertain to business and opportunities to explore classes with music, philosophy, um, English, history, and the like. Um, in terms of what you can do, you can double major, major and minor. You can pursue a master's and bachelor's degree within four to five years. And if you don't know what you want to do yet, that's okay. 20% of our students enroll undecided. Um, and with that said, it's every degree is not competitive to um, declare your major. And so there's not a certain number of seats to join. Whatever you want to study, you can study. The biggest thing about our academics is that it's very different. So this slide is all about all the different um, niche areas that we have within our academic programs. So for example, our academic calendar is different from a lot of other schools. So instead of a 14 to 16 week semester based system, our academic calendar is essentially split in half. So we have four seven week terms. You can kind of think of it as a quarter based system. So for those seven weeks in each of them, you're studying three classes at a time. And it might seem like it's sort of advanced, fast paced, but again, you're only studying three classes at a time. You're focusing on just those three classes almost every day instead of meeting every other day. Um, and then by the time you come to B term, for example, you're taking three brand new classes. The other thing is that the curriculum, all of it, whatever class you take, whatever projects you take on, it's flexible what you, um, what you can learn. So for example, no two computer science majors take the exact same courses. Maybe you're interested more so on the artificial intelligence side of things. So why don't you take XYZ classes? Maybe you're more so interested in cybersecurity. So why don't you take this, that instead? So really whatever you want to study, that's how you make your major. The third thing is that there's a non-punitive grading policy. So for example, only three letter grades will ever show up on your transcript. A, Bs, or Cs. And if you don't understand the material at at least a passing level, you get what's called an NR or a no record. So it doesn't show up your trans on your transcript and it doesn't impact your GPA. And it sort of enacts as a safety net so that you can still feel encouraged to challenge yourself or to try a particular class that interests you. And if it doesn't go so well, that's okay. You can get an NR. The fourth thing with us is that it's a lot of hands-on, project-based learning um, to the point where even if you are a STEM major, you can still go abroad. Um, and typically our students do that during their junior year. It's called the Interactive Qualifying Project and it takes up a full term. So some students might go for all the seven weeks of, for example, C term to any of these red dots that you see on this map. Those are all the different project centers that we have and our students go around for those seven weeks and they um, pursue a project, a problem, and they enact some sort of 
um, practical solution for them to impact the local community there. And there are global scholarships of up to $5,000 to help offset those travel costs. In terms of what happens after college, um, pre-professional opportunities, their career development center is great. It offers um, you know, your typical resume writing workshops, cover letter reviews, if they help you set up internships or co-ops, which are essentially longer paid internships. A co-op will typically last a D term and a summer or the summer and an A term, for example. And the CDC or Career Development Center also offers great information in terms of average starting salaries for, for example, whatever major you're interested in. So you can see, you know, per people who have graduated before you and where they've gone to work for, um, or if they've gone into the military, or for example, their average starting salary. And some notable employers are listed on the bottom of this screen here. In terms of campus life, we're a residential campus, meaning most of our students live on campus or within the vicinity. We're in the city of Worcester, which is the second largest city in New England. Um, first year housing is guaranteed. This year with COVID, three quarters of our students are on campus learning hybrid. So um, projects are in person, lectures are um, virtual. Um, and the other quarter of our students um, self-selected to um, pursue a fully remote sort of education this past year. We're D3 in terms of varsity sports. There's also club sports, intramurals, affinity groups, interest groups, everything under the sun that you can imagine. Um, so it's very typical for our students to be involved on top of all the studying that they're doing. In terms of summer opportunities, I don't know who our audience is tonight, but if you are a rising sophomore, junior, even senior in high school, there's Touch Tomorrow, which is a festival in the summer. Um, it's virtual this year, of course. Frontiers or Frontiers for Credit, um, typically for our juniors and seniors who want to take um, WPI level classes and potentially get credit for them. And for any of these opportunities, there's tuition assistance available. And just a quick admissions overview for us, if you are a rising senior and get, you're getting ready to apply for the common application that opens up in August, we don't have an application fee, we're test optional, we're also optional in terms of personal interviews. So in terms of the visit options as well, those interviews are offered, information sessions, on demand content, so they're not necessarily all live depending on what you want to tune into. And if at all, if there's anything else you want to learn, you can certainly go onto our website. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, uh, Ella. And I got it wrong, but I think it's Worcester, <laughs> WPI. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Uh, Rose Hallman, you are up next. All right, thank you. Get this going here. Okay, well, welcome. I'm Ashlyn Fortner. I'm an assistant director here in the admissions office at Rose Hallman. Um, I am the counselor in the office who works with students from Texas. So thank you all for tuning in this evening. Rose Holman is located in Terre Haute, Indiana. Um, so we are about an hour directly west of Indianapolis and also about four hours south of Chicago. So for students coming out of state from a pretty long distance, um, oftentimes they'll fly into the Indianapolis airport, which is just a quick hour drive. Uh, Terre Haute itself has about 60,000 residents and we do have two other universities in town. So we're very much so a college town. At Rose Holman, we have about 2,200 undergraduate students on campus. We do have about 100 graduate students at any given time as well. So we're a very small size university. Um, we're pretty well undergraduate focused, uh, even though we have those grad uh, programs. We do have 18 different STEM degrees. So we do only offer majors within science, engineering, and mathematics. Um, we're pretty well known for being an engineering institution. However, um, the sciences and mathematics are still a great option and it's popular um, at Rose. We have been ranked the number one undergraduate engineering institution for the past 22 years in a row. Um, so we're really proud of that recognition. The other thing, um, we have an average class size is about 20 students at Rose Holman. We don't have large lecture halls, anything like that. Um, so we'd like to keep our classes pretty small and pretty hands-on which takes me to my next slide. So um, one unique thing about Rose Holman is you really get to start uh, with that hands-on, you know, doing research, getting in labs right away as a freshman. So I always say nothing is off limits for you. Um, when you come in, there's no space on Rose Holman's campus that is 
completely set aside for graduate students or upperclassmen. So really, um, you can step right in and start doing anything you want um, in your freshman year, even at Rose. About 40% of our freshmen um, will have some type of experience, whether that be during the freshman year or after the freshman year. So that could be something like research or an internship or studying abroad. Um, so our students really get involved right away. They also have access to those state-of-the-art labs. I kind of already mentioned that. Um, some of those labs you'd have access to based on your classes, but other times you can just get involved with uh, maybe your own personal project or a research project or joining a faculty member with something they're working on. Um, we're a little bit unique. We are an education-focused institution. Um, so we are not research-based like many other schools might be. Um, so all of our faculty members were hired to be pretty much full-time educators and to do research about 20% of the time. Um, and, and teach about 80% of the time. So um, our faculty members are very dedicated to our students' education and it provides a wonderful learning environment for our undergraduate students specifically. All right, so I always like to take a few minutes and talk about career services because it's another great um, campus department. Um, so when you come in um, as a freshman at Rose Holman, there's a lot of things we do to prep you for, you know, what you're going to do after graduation. But the main thing is, is you'll get two advisors. You'll get an academic advisor as well as a career advisor. Um, and you'll take a freshman level class that preps you for that fall career fair. And we kind of require as that class to go to the fall career fair. So we push you in, even if you have no experience, we teach you everything you need to know. Um, over, over the course of the year, we typically have uh, three career fairs, one in the fall, winter, and spring. Um, these companies are recruiting for full-time uh, positions, internships, co-ops, and research experiences as well. We also have grad school fairs on campus. About 20% of our students will go directly into graduate school, school after graduation. Um, the 2020 uh, class average starting salary was over 76,000, which was up from the year before. Uh, normally our placement rate is right around 97 to 98% within six months after graduation. And, and this year was no different. Uh, 2020 was no different for us, for us as well. Um, I, I'm going to end it here so you can take down my contact information, but I do have a couple other things that aren't on this slide that I'd like to talk about. Um, our application is, whoops, ah, I don't know if my screen is still showing there. Okay. Um, our application is still um, available on our website or the common application, whichever uh, you would prefer um, if you are a senior. If you are a rising uh, senior or junior, um, we do have a couple summer options, um, summer programs that are still happening this summer in person. Operation Catapult and Project Select are two overnight summer camps. Um, they focus on engineering projects. Um, we have a couple other virtual options you could check out as well if you're maybe not thinking about coming to campus quite yet. Um, also, I'll note that we are open for visits, so we'd love to see you on campus sometime. Um, you can head to our website to schedule that, but if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Missouri University of Science and Technology. Hello everyone, my name is Cindy Welch and I am the Assistant Director of Regional Recruitment at Missouri University of Science and Technology, also known as Missouri S&T. Missouri S&T is located in Rolla, which is about halfway between St. Louis and Springfield, Missouri. Rolla is a small town with a population of just over 20,000 in the city limits, but we have nearly 8,000 students and another 50,000 people coming from nearby communities for shopping, dining, and entertainment. Rolla is part of the South Central Ozark Highlands, so you're going to find many lakes, rivers, and streams where people enjoy fishing and swimming, canoeing, kayaking, camping, and other fun outdoor activities. There are caves to explore, zip lines to maneuver, and over 300 acres of city parks with over 10 miles of walking and biking trails. Rolla has a nice balance of urban development and small town charm, so I'm sure you'll find everything you need here. Missouri s and was founded in 1870 as one of the first technological universities west of the Mississippi, so we are celebrating our 150th year. s and is ranked the number one public engineering university in the nation by pay scale, also the number one university in Missouri for alumni salary potential, the number one public university in Missouri, and number eight in the nation among all colleges and universities for annual return on investment. Another really cool ranking is from the National Campus Safety Summit, 
where ST was named the 20th safest campus in the nation. ST is a medium sized university with over 7,600 students from across the US and around the world, about 6,100 undergraduates and 1,500 graduate students. We have a student faculty ratio of 18 to 1, and the average class size is less than 30 students. ST offers 96 or excuse me, 99 degree programs in 40 areas of study. And the College of Arts, Sciences and Business, we have the sciences like biology, chemistry, physics, humanities, liberal arts, an AACSB accredited undergraduate business program, teacher certifications, and pre-professional programs such as pre-med, pre-vet, pre-law, and a direct entry program into the St. Louis College of Pharmacy. However, Missouri S&T is best known for our engineering programs with about 75% of our students majoring in these degrees. In the College of Engineering and Computing, we have 15 different undergraduate engineering majors, as well as computer science and geology and geophysics. Last fall, we introduced a new global engineering program where students can earn two bachelor's degrees in five years, a BS in engineering, and a BA in interdisciplinary studies with a minor in uh, French or Spanish. These students will get to study abroad one semester and have an engineering internship abroad one semester. ST also offers unique engineering minors, including biomedical, explosives, and humanitarian engineering. We also have focused research in several areas, and undergraduates can participate in research as early as their freshman year. So ST has over 250 clubs and organizations you can get involved with. We have 19 student design teams that give students the opportunity to develop their problem solving and teamwork skills while designing and building race cars, robots, rockets, canoes, rovers, and more. ST has 15 NCAA Division II athletic teams and they place fifth all time among NCAA Division II colleges and universities for Capital One Academic All-American selections. We also have intramural and club sports. About 23% of students participate in Greek life. We have theater, band, orchestra, study abroad, and much more. Missouri s and has two career fairs each year, which are among the largest in the Midwest. Last year, over 4,000 different employers actively recruited s and students at career fairs, on-campus events, and online through our job portal. The average starting salary for students graduating with a bachelor's degree is 67.5, and students doing internships and co-ops earn an average of over $3,300 per month. ST students go to work for Fortune 5 companies across the US, including Boeing, Google, NASA, SpaceX, and more. We are still accepting applications for fall of 2021, and students can apply test optional this year. You can apply free on our application or on the Common App. For younger students, you can apply during the summer before your senior year. You will submit your high school transcript and your ACT or SAT score if you have one, and then we, you will be notified of your admissions decision within a few weeks. s and is very affordable and we offer excellent merit-based scholarships. Our most prestigious scholarship for out-of-state students is the Distinguished Scholars Award. It's a competitive scholarship worth $30,000 per year. It's renewable for four years. And to qualify, you must have a minimum cumulative GPA of 3.75, an ACT of 29, or an SAT of 1330. We have additional scholarships you can apply for after you've been admitted as well. We are currently offering on-campus and virtual presentations with faculty, current students, and staff. You can find all of our virtual options at visit.mst.edu. If you have any questions about Missouri s and please reach out via phone, email, or on social media. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we hope to see you soon. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Michigan Tech. Hi, I'm Chrissy Grotsky. I am one of the admission counselors that works with all the students in Texas. And I'm here from Michigan Technological University, otherwise known as Michigan Tech. If you haven't heard of us, 
That's okay. Let me give you a little bit of information. We are located in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So we are straight north of where most of you guys are. And the truth is, is we are north of Wisconsin. Yes, that is still Michigan. It's not Canada. We're right up by Lake Superior. And so the nearest airport is going to be Green Bay, but actually the best place to fly from Texas is into Chicago and then up to campus. There's two flights in and out each day. We have about 7,000 students total on campus, of which about 5,600 are like you going for your bachelor's degree. The rest are master's and PhD students. Just to give you an idea of where our average student falls, our average student is roughly about a 3.78 um, out of a 4.0 GPA, roughly about a 12.52 on the SAT, so half or above that, half or below that, around a 26 ACT. So um, that might give you kind of an idea of where you fall academically. Now we're best known for engineering. About 60% of our students are engineers. Most of our students are in some sort of science, technology, engineering, mathematics. We also have a full college of business, but we're a full-blown university. We have 120 different areas of study. So if you're interested maybe in theater, both performance or the tech side, maybe you really are looking for a research-based psychology department, um, we have a full school, or actually College of Forestry and Environmental Science. I mean, come on, we're up in the woods. Once you get out of town, there's more trees than people. So it's a really great place to study some of those programs. So check, take a look at our full list on our website if there's something that you're looking for specifically. We do have accelerated master's programs in these particular areas. All of these, you can go one additional year after your bachelor's and earn your master's at Michigan Tech. So if that's something that you know you want to do, we allow you to do that kind of in a quicker time frame and it's a little cheaper too. We are a public research institution. And if you notice, we have mostly undergraduates. So our undergraduates do a lot of the research on our campus. Actually, this is um, one of the labs that we're working on here. And Megan Frost is the faculty member in the, the picture. Um, she always says that the best way that students learn is by doing. You know, they're learning it in the classroom, but then they're really getting to do that. And our summer undergraduate research fellowship is a great way to do that. We have over 125,000 paid hours every summer for our students to do research on our campus. Our student enterprise teams are pretty active. We have about 25 of these teams on our campus. So these are projects that you work on for at least three years on our campus. The nice part about that is you really get involved and there's ways to kind of work up on the team. So for example, this particular team is looking at the Chevy Bolt and ways to make it fully autonomous. So it's, there are about 50 members on this team and they're working together on different parts and components. There's computer scientists, engineers, we even have some business students involved. So there's lots and lots of majors working on different projects. So if you really like that build design aspect, there are a lot of different ways to do that. Senior design is also open for our engineering students. They spend an entire year working on a project for industry. So for example, like the team you see here, a company came to them and said, we're having problems. We wanna make a stint for infant heart surgery and we want it to sort of grow with the infant so that they can have less surgeries over time. And so our, we've had teams of students working on that for a couple of years so that they're doing actual design research for a company or corporation. Seems to be working. We get over 400 companies to campus each year. And if you notice where Michigan Tech is, they're not coming by accident. They did come virtually this year. Um, we had 93% placement rate six months after graduation into a job in your field, graduate school, or the military. We do have Army and Air Force ROTC on our campus. We currently have the ninth highest starting salaries in the nation for public universities. with are starting salaries um, over $65,000 per year. We do like to have fun, not that the research and design work isn't fun. There's over 230 student organizations, including visual and performing arts, different cultural groups, community. I mean, our students are driving from far away to come to campus. Our average drive time for our students is about nine to 10 hours. And we have about 10% of our students are international students. So our students are not going home on the weekends. So it does really give you that true campus feel. Um, so if you're looking for a school that's kind of mid-sized, doing really large research projects, but really do, does feel like home, we can be a place for that. We do have division one men's ice hockey and the rest of our varsity sports are division two. Our newest team is our co-ed um, esports team. So if you ever want to earn a scholarship for playing video games, we might be the school for you. 
It'd be hard not to talk about all the outdoor adventures that you can have at Michigan Tech. This is actually taken from our ski hill. So a lot of our students ski and snowboard. We get about 200 inches of snow a year. So it's a lot of fun. But honestly, our town has about 15,000 people. And then when you get out, there's more trees than people. So mountain bike trails, cross country skiing, all sorts of fun stuff. So if you have that adventurous spirit, definitely a way to do that. Just some quick nuts and bolts. We aren't requiring test scores next year. So it's free to apply. No essay unless you're applying for something in the visual and performing arts and our application opens June 15th. You'll hear back from us in about two to three weeks. And there's a variety of scholarships based on need as well as other factors. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, we have Lawrence Tech. Hi, everybody. I'm Leslie Keeler. I'm the Texas Regional Admissions Counselor for Lawrence Tech. Trying to get my screen up there. There we go. Um, so this is a picture of our campus. I love this picture because you can see or, or maybe be able to tell how the newer buildings just kind of seamlessly fit in with the older buildings. I think that's kind of a cool way to illustrate, you know, tradition with, you know, new design and technology. This is on my, also my email address. If you guys have questions later, please has, don't hesitate to contact me directly. Uh, Lawrence Tech is a small private university. We offer a personalized education with small classes, a small faculty to student ratio. Um, we have uh, about 2,500 students uh, and over 100 different programs in colleges of uh, architecture and design, engineering, arts and sciences, and business and computer information technology. Uh, we were founded in 1932 by the Lawrence brothers who founded the university with the motto of theory and practice. And we continue to implement that motto through a variety of ways. Uh, most of our students are involved in co-ops and internships. Uh, paid internships, co-ops would be where you get college credit. Um, we do research and projects in our labs and studios all over campus. So we have state-of-the-art facilities where students actually work on projects and do research. We also offer every student gets a personalized laptop computer that has all the software on it for their major. And it's industry standard software um, valued at about $75,000. It's a tremendous value. So the atmosphere at Lawrence Tech is really unique and very welcoming. We have um, that big school feel with NAIA athletics, Greek life, student organizations, events on campus. We do have esports. We just opened our new esports arena a couple years ago. So you have all of that activity and spirit, um, but all within a very convenient and homey uh, atmosphere. Um, we do have four residence halls. We have two ultra modern community style uh, where freshmen stay. And then we have two more traditional apartment style dorms. And we have free parking. We have transportation on campus. We have tech transit with a couple of vans and autonomous taxis. So I like to talk a little bit about career services because they will be involved in helping you get that co-op and, men and or mentorship uh, I'm sorry, internship that you want. They bring multiple employers to campus um, every year, um, set up lots of different activities for students to take advantage of, uh, including job fairs. And so we do tout a 92% um, success rate within three months of graduation, either students are employed or they're going to grad school. Um, and we're in the top 11% of alumni salaries based on your tuition investment. So your tuition investment is, it's different for each major, but it's about $46,000 a year and that's with room and board. But most of our students do get some kind of financial aid and some kind of scholarship. So um, speaking of scholarships, we have academic scholarships ranging from 4,500 a year all the way to 18,000 a year. Um, we are test optional for this year and uh, 2022. So we do not look at test scores in terms of scholarships. 
Um, you can see there, there's also all kinds of different ways you can get a scholarship from athletic scholarships to um, our National Blue Devil Scholarship, which is our out of state scholarship. So everybody from Texas is going to get the National Blue Devil Scholarship, which is $5,000 a year for five years. For four years, I'm sorry. So uh, let's talk a little bit about applying. We require a transcript, an essay, and um, the application form, which is on the website. So it's pretty easy to apply. Um, and like I said, we are test optional for 2021 and 2022. And um, looking at all the four colleges, we have great majors, architecture and design, you can get a direct entry five year masters if you wanna be an architect, um, as well as game design, uh, transportation design, one of a kind programs like that. Uh, business and information technology, a variety of majors there um, in five different areas, as well as some masters. Uh, arts and sciences, things like computer science, our nursing program, which has been recognized in Michigan. It's housed in our STEM center. They have a state-of-the-art nursing suite, and they also do um, internship hours with Ascension Health there in Michigan. And then finally, engineering, which is how we started. Uh, every kind of engineering, a five-year audio or five-year um, architectural engineering, as well as unique majors like audio engineering technology um, and those kinds of majors. And we also have lots of really great state-of-the-art engineering labs. So we have tons of opportunities to connect virtually everything from ask a professor to uh, just a college overview. So I encourage you to go to the website or just reach out to me directly. It's my job to be here for you and help you with your college search. So um, jot down my information, don't be shy, reach out, visit us virtually and find out that it is an exciting time to be a Blue Devil. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, don't forget, uh, panelists, you're welcome to put any information or links uh, in the chat uh, for the attendees to have. All right, next up, we've, we have Cal Pauly. Good evening, everybody. My name is Kenneth Oliver. I'm the Regional Admissions Manager for the state of Texas at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo, California. It's a lot to say. Um, San Luis Obispo and Cal Poly is located on the central coast of California. We're about midway between Los Angeles and San Francisco, about three hours south of San Francisco, three hours north of Los Angeles. And we're also about an hour and a half from Santa Barbara. We're also about 12, 12 miles from the ocean, and it really is like going to school in paradise. So just to give you a sense of uh, the town of San Luis Obispo. So San Luis Obispo has about 43,000 residents, 22,000 of which are our, are our students. So it really is like a college town. It's a coastal town. It's very laid back, very relaxed, and very beautiful. Cal Poly, like I said, we have about 22,000 students, 21,000 of which are undergraduates. So we are an undergraduate serving university. What that means for you is that your classes will be fairly small. The average uh, size of a classroom is about 35 students and the student to teacher ratio is about 19 to one. You'll never be taught by teaching assistants, always by professors. And the benefit to you is that you get to garner very close relationships with professors. You don't have to compete against graduate students for the uses of equipment or the attention of your professors. So our philosophy at Cal Poly for the past 100 years has been learn by doing. What do we mean when we say learn by doing? Basically, we are saying that we believe that education in the classroom should be accompanied by practice. So we have a great relationship with industry. For example, in our College of Business, industry creates our curriculum. So basically we let industry leaders tell us what we believe, what they believe to be important for our students to learn. So some, some unique things about Cal Poly. So first, um, we require students to declare their majors when they apply. Cal Poly is for the focused students. And we do that for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that we have an upside down curriculum. What I mean by that is, whereas in most other universities, where you'll start taking courses in your major later on in your college career, at Cal Poly, you'll start taking courses in your major day one as a freshman. So what that means is by the time you go on the market looking for internships as a freshman and sophomore, you'll be able to compete against juniors and seniors from other universities. And many times our students meet out their competitors. And the other great thing about that upside, upside down curriculum is you'll start courses in your major day one. So you'll know whether or not that major is right for you. And if it's not, we can get you out of that major and get you into the major that is right so that you can graduate on time. 
Our largest colleges are our College of Engineering and our College of Business, and they are nationally known. But to be honest with you, we're good at everything we do. Our College of Architecture is ranked number one. Our College of Agriculture is nationally recognized, one of the best programs in the country. As such, we are a very competitive university in terms of admissions. So we receive about 65,000 applications for 4,500 spots. Um, the average GPA is about a 4.0 across all four colleges, and the average SAT score is about 1,400. Obviously, for engineering, it's a little bit higher. It's closer to like 4.2. Um, so, oh, admissions. So, yeah, so we are very competitive. So in terms of admission, so we do not use a common application. We use Cal State Apply. Our, um, our application opens, when is it, October 1st, and closes usually around December 1st. And we only look at three things in terms of our selection when, we, when we're selecting students. Those are gonna be the courses that you took grades nine through 12, the grades received grades nine through 11, and extracurricular activities. So there are no recommendations, there are no personal essays, um, and we are, we're not, I, I can't say SAT optional because we're not including test scores at all um, as of now. That may change, but right now we're, we're not um, including them at all. So I would definitely recommend, um, so yeah, so as I was saying, so yes, we are, it is very competitive. Um, so one quick word of advice for students in Texas, the, the state of California requires students to take a year of visual or performing arts. So if you haven't done that and you're considering Cal Poly, I recommend doing that right away. And that can be fulfilled by even taking a, a photography course at a local college over the summer. Okay, I have about a minute and a half left. So I'm gonna talk a little about, bit about career services. So first of all, 99% of our students have jobs pretty much before they walk across the graduation stage. And again, we have relationships with companies across the nation. Um, we also, so our philosophy is learned by doing, but we, our, our additional philosophy is ready day one. And companies really like to hire Cal Poly students because our students have been working, using the equipment in their field and in their field since they were freshmen. So our students are, it costs less money to train a Cal Poly graduate and our students are ready day one. I highly recommend you go to our website, which is calpoly.edu. My information is inside of the chat box. Feel free to reach out to me. You can call me, you can set up a Calendly, um, or you can email me. But I recommend going to our website, taking, taking advantage of our virtual opportunities. We have virtual tours where you'll get to speak with students and, and admissions officers. So if you think that Cal Poly is right for you, submit that application and we'll be glad to review it by now. All right, thank you so much. And of course, uh, feel free to put any of your information into the chats uh, so that the attendees can access that. Uh, if everyone can turn on their camera and um, unmute, we're just gonna do a quick little uh, uh, session of questions. You have about 30 seconds a piece, not particularly timing it, but just if you could go through and tell us uh, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process. Starting with Worcester. Sure. So I'll start off. Um, for me, um, being, for example, a first gen uh, identifying student, so that means I was the first in my family to graduate from a U.S. university. Um, my biggest advice would be in terms of tackling the application. So for example, WPI is on the Common app, um, and there's this one section for most schools where it's like a, a school specific question, um, in which case it's it's not necessarily supposed to be three sentences long or three pages long, but it certainly should be a space where you should put some thought into it. And it's a great place for you to show your interest in that school. So be specific, maybe it's a particular class or maybe it's a particular club you're interested in. Maybe it's something you learned from an information session or a tour, but try to be specific in those school specific essays is my advice. All right, my piece of advice um, would be um, specific to Rose Holman's application. Um, it sometimes trips students up. Uh, so we do require a year of biology, a year of chemistry, and a year of physics. Um, so if you are considering applying to Rose Holman, um, just make sure that you're able to get those during your high school time um, or reach out to us and we can give you some other options for how to complete those. But that would be a great tip. And as long as you're you know, communicating with us, your application, um, you know, it'll be smooth sailing from there. But I just wanted to note that because it does tend to trip students up at times. 
Well, I think that uh, the one thing that I feel like a lot of students do is they don't get in on scholarships uh, as much as they should. So in order to get the best scholarship offer from each of the colleges that you apply to, make sure you're applying early, like in the summer before the, your senior year starts. It's a great time to start your applications. Um, each university has different deadlines. So chat with your admissions counselor to make sure um, that you're applying before their deadlines. Um, we have students who apply late uh, and they miss out on some really great scholarships. So um, that would be my advice. And check the time zone. Um, <laughs> my, my advice would be, if you have the opportunity to get involved, that's great, but we're not looking for you to have this massive list of activities that you've done. I would rather see a student who's picked a couple of things that they do really well as far as student activities or jobs outside of school or things like that, because especially in like the scholarship essays, we don't want you to regurgitate your resume. Like we wanna know why you did it and what you learned and why this excites you. That's what we're looking for. So as you start to think about the clubs and organizations you're involved with, you'll think about why you're doing it or why you love it or what you've learned from being part of it. That's what we really wanna know. Is it my turn? Um. Since no one said it yet, I would say um, every student needs to fill out the FAFSA. Um, for us, it's just, we have to have that in order to put together an, uh, a comprehensive financial aid uh, notification, including merit-based scholarships. So um, get ready to do that. Um, the other thing is that every college is gonna look at your GPA. So what I like to tell students is just you wanna take the most challenging courses that are offered at your school that you can handle and do the best you can. And it's really simple, but um, it's something you need to remember all the way through high school because that's what we're gonna be looking at. Okay, I would say um, my advice would be um, for Cal Poly specifically, I would say make sure to read the application very carefully. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us. And I say that because um, for, for the most part, once an application is submitted at Cal Poly, there's not much we can do to change. So um, if there are errors, there's pretty much nothing we can do. Um, yeah, so that would be my advice. Read the application very carefully. If you have any questions, um, always reach out. Okay, well, great advice, uh, especially with the time zones, uh, <laughs> making sure that you're, you're checking deadlines and scholarships and FAFSA and, and following directions is so incredibly important. So great advice, uh, panelists, and um, good luck to all the student, students. But before you go, just one last thing I have to share with you. Um, there is a quick survey. So as soon as you exit out of here, it's just four quick questions. Um, this is the last day for this uh, um, college fair. So you'd have to hop on the next two sessions if you're going to do that. And there is a recording of this that is available usually within the week um, at strivecan.com. So again, thank you so very much and good luck. And thank you again, panelists and have a good night. Thanks everyone. Take care.